I've had this car for, well I picked it up last November, give or take. I just sold my E34 at the time that I had as a project and this came up really, really cheap. So uh, I just took a chance on it. I mean, it was, it was on adverts for two grand. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't turn down, down an opportunity to get a 205. First guy bought it and sold it to a, an EU diplomat. And he, he was actually an EU diplomat himself. And the second guy obviously finished his, his, his stint in Japan and, and was going back to Belgium and exported the car with him back there. Um, and the guy that I bought it off actually bought it off the guy in Belgium and brought it back to Ireland, where it sat for about 15 years as there's no NCTs or anything for the car, so I can't actually trace what it's been doing. And I'm just going by the word of mouth from the owner. He, he said it hadn't really ran in 15 years. When I picked it up then, I'm the fourth owner and just have it back on the road now. You know, we, I thought it was a distributor, so I got a second hand one and put it in and was fiddling around with it. And eventually, like, I got it to idle. If I had my foot on the accelerator, I wouldn't just hold an idle. There was other electrical gremlins that were above my kind of uh, my ability, so I had to get a bit of help. Like I had to wire in a lot of stuff myself. I had to redo a lot of the lighting circuits and I had to rewire in the window washer pump and the fog lights and, and stuff like that. And uh, the lights on the front at the bottom or the driving lights, they wouldn't come on when you put the headlights on. They're supposed to latch on. They wouldn't do it. And I did all that myself. I just got wiring diagrams online and just traced all the wires with a multimeter because um, French cars have terrible electrics. That was a lot shorter than actually figuring out why it wouldn't run. It eventually was the distributor plus some other electrical gremlins and um, just it just took a while because the guy that I had brought it to first actually couldn't figure out what was actually wrong with it so we had to bring it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, it's all sorted now. It's NCT and taxed and driving around. It uses 1.6 running gear with a 1.9 engine, so it's hard to kind of, the 1.6 parts are different to the 1.9s, so sometimes you might end up with the wrong part by accident, you know what I mean, because if you could tell them it's 1.9, they'd be like, oh yeah, these are the, this is for the back, and oh yeah, it takes discs at the back, oh no, no, it has drums though. I got a few of the parts second hand, and the car came with a few parts. He had left in, like, spare lights and spare bits and bobs, should I need it, but uh, I managed to get a distributor for like 60 quid and put it in, but of course, there was a little bit of extra work that went on in the background of that, and that cost me a few hundred. I paid 19 for it, 1900 for it, and I probably spent maybe 500 quid, 600 quid getting it right. It's an automatic as well, but I think that a lot of the Japanese cars came in as automatics because of the regulations and stuff, and um, it's got a cat on it as well, so that reduces the power slightly. Well, I know a standard GTI is like 120, so if this is a cat, and it's probably slightly detuned for the Japanese market, so it's probably like 110 or something. There's a vent missing and I just print, 3D printed one out and put it in. But like the interior is really clean. It's, it surprises me even like just a little bit of, I wouldn't even say wear, just the foam is a bit kind of come, come away on the bolster on one side, but it's not ripped or anything. You wouldn't really know. It was in a garage, so I don't know if that helped. It probably did a little bit, but I like hoovered it out a few times and kind of washed the seats. And I mean, it's, it's fine. It doesn't smell funny and I don't smell funny getting out of it. So like. <laughs> I suppose the most uh, impressive thing for me was just the mileage, like, it's only got 55 on it, 55,000 miles. So I tidied it up a little bit, you know, it, it had been sitting for a while, so just tidied it up and, you know, readdressed some of the, the portions that had maybe got some surface rust that were supposed to be originally black or whatever, just, you know, make it look a bit cleaner, like, but from a functionality point of view now, it's all 100%. Yeah, Sunday evening, you know, Saturday morning or something, yeah, absolutely, try and take it out for a spin. I actually just like ripping around Hoth, personally, because it's class and it's gorgeous. If I was going out a bit further, probably Sally's Gap or something, it's just, again, stunning, nice roads. When it's cold, it can be a bit, you know, temperamental, because it's old and it, apparently a lot of Peugeots are kind of like that as well. They kind of just run a bit rough when they're cold. It still has the old um, Japanese version of the NCT sticker on the window. I think it's called a Shaken. There's actually a flare in the car as well, because that's one of the Japanese requirements has the uh, power windows and it has the uh, air conditioning and stuff in it as well, which I think is a really good spec for the time. It's an automatic as well, but I think that a lot of the Japanese cars came in as automatics because of the regulations. A standard GTI is like 120, so if this is a cat, and it's probably slightly detuned for the Japanese market, so it's probably like 110. Those are the wheels off a of 1.6 because the Japanese exports had the 1.9 engines 
In the setup where they had the 1.9 engines, they came with the 1.6 running gear, so it has drums on the back, discs on the front, and it has 1.6 wheels. So this is um, styled by Pin and Farina, which is an after, you know, it was done after the actual GTI was released because they wanted to keep the body lines. They were produced in France and then the shells were passed on to Italy where they were kind of modified to have the convertible and then they were brought back over and, and the engine and stuff was put into them. I suppose the most uh, impressive thing for me was just the mileage, like it's only got 55 on it, 55,000 miles, which is crazy. Um, so there are the red, red plates which actually look banging with the red trim, but you can't use them legally here. Loads of history with the car as well. The stuff on the seat there is from like, I don't know, the last 30 years of, of nearly. Um, of course the second half isn't as, as lucrative and rich of, in history because it hasn't really done much, but I have every document at the start there, which is cool. Like, It's actually quite nippy, yeah. I mean, I haven't timed it, but like, it's quicker than the Beamer. It still has the old, um, Japanese version of the NCT sticker on the window. I think it's called a Shaken. There's actually a flare in the car as well because that's one of the Japanese requirements as well. Original CTI steering wheel, yeah. Uh, cloth seats with the red trim, red carpets, original floor mats, everything. It's like it just hasn't been touched ever or modified or anything. Like it's bone stock. Even the radio is a Peugeot radio from the 90s. Like <laughs> Because it's a Japanese car though, it only picks up 70 to maybe 90 FM. Power windows on it, yeah. And the uh, AC is in there behind the steering wheel on the on the dash. Cleaning out this car and just searching through it, I found this, which is I can only assume a '90s advert for McDonald's. Really cool. I tried to use it today, and they wouldn't let me use it, so I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> old Japanese uh, owner manuals and stuff. Just everything's just crazy with this car. There's so much, like everything as is as it should be, and just like to have all the stuff is so cool like